Welcome back to IntegralCalc.com. Today we're going to be taking the derivative of the function f of x equals ln, or the natural log, of x times the square root of x squared plus 1. And in order to take the derivative of this function, we're going to need um, the product rule formula. We're also going to need the um, formula that tells us the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. Um, but to take the derivative of this function, first of all, the derivative of f of x is always f prime of x. And whenever we're taking the derivative of something involving the natural log, or ln, we're going to be referring to this formula here. And what this tells us is that whatever is inside the natural log function is going to go straight to the denominator. We're going to have 1 in the numerator, and everything inside that natural log function goes to the denominator. So in our case, we're going to take everything inside the natural log function, which is everything inside these brackets, and we're going to put it in our denominator. So 1 divided by the square root of x squared plus 1. And normally, that would be all we would have to do if what was inside our natural log was just x, right? The formula is dealing with the natural log or ln of x only. Um, what's inside our natu natural log function is a much more complicated than just ln of x. So um, we do this step here where we take what's inside the natural log and we put it in the denominator and we put 1 in the numerator and that's great. But now we have to attend to what's inside the natural log function. So in order to do that, um, like, like I said, we, we do this step, but then we multiply by the derivative of what's inside right here. So the derivative um, of, of x times the square root of x squared plus 1, we're going to find using the product rule. So first of all, let's convert this um, x times the square root of x squared plus 1 to x times x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Remember that the square root of x is equal to x to the 1 half. So when we see the square root of x squared plus 1, we can change that to the quantity x squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. We haven't changed anything about the function. We've only changed the way that it's written. So we're going to um, transform our function into uh, this right here. And now we need to multiply um, this part here by the derivative of this x times the quantity x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. And in order to do that, we'll need the product rule, which tells us that when we have two functions multiplied together, f of x and g of x, we're going to use this formula here to find the derivative. So we'll go through that um, step by step. So the first thing we need is f prime of x, in other words, the derivative of our first function. Well, our functions, f of x and g of x, are x and this quantity x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So for um, f prime of x, we're looking for the derivative of x. The derivative of x is just 1. Let's do this. 1. So we go ahead and write that, and then we are going to uh, multiply by g of x without doing anything to it. So that's going to be x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Okay, then we add f of x as it is untouched. So we go ahead and write that x in right from here again. And then uh, we multiply by the derivative of g of x. Well, g of x is the quantity x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So um, the derivative of that, we're actually going to need chain rule again to find the derivative of that specifically. Um, let's look at down here the derivative of x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So taking the derivative of this, like I said, requires us to use chain rule. The outside function, remember that with chain rule, basically what, what chain rule tells us is that we take the derivative of the outside function first, leaving the inside function completely alone without doing anything to it. Then we multiply what we got by the derivative of the inside function. 
So our outside function is essentially x to the 1 half, and the inside function is x squared plus 1. So imagine if instead of x squared plus 1, you just had x to the 1 half, right? Replacing that x squared plus 1 with just x. The derivative of that would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, right? Which means the derivative of our outside function right here is going to be 1 half times x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half, okay? So we took the derivative of the outside function, leaving that inside function completely alone. x squared plus 1, we don't even think about right now. So we ignore that. That's the derivative of the outside function, so we'll check that off. But now we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, which is x squared plus 1. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x, I guess 2x plus 0. The derivative of the constant 1 is 0. So 2x plus 0 is just 2x, so we multiply by 2x. So this right here is the derivative of um, g of x. So we can multiply here by 1 half times x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half times 2x. That's a lot of parentheses. But um, that is the derivative of our function g of x. So we have finished writing um, our derivative function, and now it's just a matter of simplification, which will be um, a little bit of an undertaking given um, how complicated this is. So to simplify this, we'll have 1 over x times the square root of x squared plus 1. I'm going to leave that first term exactly as it is for now. Inside here, that 1 is redundant. We don't have to write it. So we're just going to have um, x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. I'm going to go ahead right now, remember this formula over here, and rewrite that as the square root of x squared plus 1. Right? I haven't changed anything, just um, rewrote it. So x squared plus 1 to the 1 half, that part's done. Now, notice here we're looking at, um, let's grab, let's grab a purple. We're going to look at this part right here. Okay, so um, we've got a 2 in our denominator right here and a 2 in our numerator. So those two can cancel each other. And we'll just be left with plus x squared, right? And then um, we've got this multiplied by x squared plus 1 to the uh, negative 1 half. Okay? Um, so let's now do a couple of things. Um, Instead of, we'll rewrite this here, x times the square root of x squared plus 1 times the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x squared. Um, this x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half, we can move that to the denominator by changing the sign on the exponent from a negative to a positive. So instead of x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half in the numerator, we can move that to the denominator and call it x squared plus 1 to the positive 1 half. But remember that um, now that we've transformed it in this way, we've got x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Well, we can rewrite that as the square root of x squared plus 1. So let's go ahead and simplify this now to 1 over x times the square root of x squared plus 1. We've got this multiplied by the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x squared over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, so now I think we can distribute our uh, our term out in front here. So let's get rid of all this stuff. Um, so we've got f prime of x 
equals. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this first term out through these parentheses here. So when I do that, I'll get the square root of x squared plus 1 divided by x times the square root of x squared plus 1 when I multiply these two terms together. And then I'll get plus, let's see, x squared in the numerator divided by, we've got x in the denominator, and when we multiply this square root of x plus 1 by this square root of x plus 1, um, they will combine to just be x squared plus 1, right? When you multiply the square root of something by the square root of the same thing, the square root signs go away. So we've just got x squared plus 1 there. So now um, we can uh, do some cancellation here. In our first term, we can cancel out the square root of x squared plus 1, and we're just left with 1 over x. And in the second term, we can cancel out an x from the numerator and denominator. So this one's going to go away completely, and this exponent will go away. And we're just left with x divided by x squared plus 1. So now, if we want to combine these fractions, what we would do to find a common denominator is multiply the second term by x over x, right? Because our... Um, the denominator of our other fraction is x, so we multiply that by the numerator and denominator of this fraction. And then, um, let's, let's just erase that guy. And then the um, first one here, to get a common denominator with the other um, fraction, we'll multiply by its denominator, x squared plus 1, divided by x squared plus 1. And when we do that, we'll get x squared plus, plus 1, um, over x squared plus 1 times x and then we're going to add to that x squared and again x times x squared plus 1. And now as you can see we've got the same denominator. So given that we have the same denominator we can combine the fractions. We have um, x squared plus 1 plus x squared in our numerator so that's going to be 2x squared plus 1 in the numerator divided by x times the quantity x squared plus 1. And that's really as far as we can um, simplify our fraction. So that'll be our final answer. We'll go ahead and write it uh, formally as f prime of x, which is the derivative of f of x. And it's equal to 2x squared plus 1 divided by x times the quantity x squared plus 1. And that's it. That's our final answer. I hope that video was helpful to you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!